and I teach, and I'm deputy also of Islam, MSc Islamic Finance. Yeah, uh, I think that's the important. That's the important role is your is that you're the deputy for the Islamic Finance Program. Um, so let me just uh, share. Well, let me give a little bit of background. Um, so. The Islamic MSc Islamic Finance Program comes out of an agreement uh, about a partnership between um, Al Maktoum College and the School of Business to deliver the MSc Islamic Finance. Now, what that uh, partnership does is that um, the Islamic Finance components of the uh, master's program are taught by the specialists, which are Al Maktoum College, who have a long history of teaching Islamic Finance. And the, um, the conventional finance components are taught by the School of Business. The degree is a part of the University of Dundee, and so uh, all of the arrangements and the quality assurance, etc. And the awarding of the degree is um, made by uh, the University of Dundee. But we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, as, we, as we go along. I will now try to uh, share... Um, share some overheads here. So, if we're lucky, this will share. Right, how's that? Is, uh, can you see that, Ali? Yes. Excellent. Right, so let's just start talking off a little bit about um, uh, this, partnership that we have with Al Maktoum College. Um, maybe Ali, you're the best person to talk um, personally about Al Maktoum College because that's where you're cited. I mean, shortly, uh, college is just located across the road from Dundee University. Uh, it provides mainly Middle East Islamic studies and Arabic language. But in, in relation to this program, as we will take, uh, explain you, uh, all modules which are Islamic finance oriented modules are also taught at Dundee University. So you are fully Dundee University students. Al Maktoum only provides teaching and supervision to the matters relating to specialized area of Islamic finance. College, as you can see, was founded in 2002 by, the, by our patron, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Rashid Al Maktoum, who is the deputy ruler of Dubai and we are sponsored from him. Uh, they also come twice a year to the college. We have other programs which are also, you might be able to join and see. In addition to that, people who would like to study Arabic language, as current some of the master students who are already doing MSc, they also attend Arabic language, language courses according to your level. And, uh, you can use also facilities which are available in the college. I mean, in terms of the library, uh, Al Maktoum provides excellent uh, resources for um, uh, Islamic finance related modules. So that's, what, and also my office and another person who is teaching on this program is based in Al Maktoum College. So the relationship has been um, going on from about uh, 2016, I think is when it started, the, um, the discussions and the close relationship between the School of Business and our McToom College. I've had a lot to do with uh, the college over the years because I've also um, presented and given seminars, workshops uh, in their summer schools and their other programs which they, um, where they bring students and uh, academics from around the world. I am just overwhelmed by how um, uh, careful and supportive of the students they are, but also the, the, the level of um, uh, and quality of the teaching that goes on is just um, uh, second to none, as far as I can see. Um, as uh, Ali says, there's also the Islamic Finance Library. Now, uh, if we had started the finance library, Islamic Finance Library in Dundee, um, we wouldn't have had all of these years, 20 years of having built up an excellent um, Islamic finance library and it's there and available. When you join the uh, program and the University of Dundee, you also become an associate member of Al Maktoum College, which allows you to have access to the facilities at Al Maktoum College. And they are uh, in impressive in terms of uh, space, um, place to relax, meet other people, uh, interact with the local community, 
um, and the Islamic Finance Library as, as well as we go forward. So this is really an impressive, um, I'm incredibly happy about this re working relationship with Al McToom College because I think it delivers really high quality um, teaching and care of the students. The other thing that we should say, uh, and we'll probably come back up uh, later on, is that um, uh, this is an Islamic finance degree. And so the large majority of the, um, of the modules is about Islamic finance. So uh, six or seven, depending on what your, what your choices are, six or seven out of nine of the modules um, are Islamic finance and are taught out of um, Al Maktoum College. The, um, in normal times, uh, before COVID-19, the teaching is all done on campus um, here at the University of Dundee. Um, but the, the college is literally four minutes walk, four or five minutes walk, maybe not even five minutes walk, but you can see the college from the edge of the campus of the um, School of Business and it is just over the road and down a little bit. So it's very close. Right, let's um, continue on. Um, uh, hang on, hang on. We don't want to go straight to that. So the Islamic finance program, um, the base program is what we call Islamic finance, but there are also two pathways, uh, MSc Islamic Banking and Finance, MSc Islamic Banking, Finance, International Business. Now, um, the reason why we have these pathways is that it's a signal to your uh, employer about your particular skills and also your uh, particular interests. So if you feel as though you're likely to go into banking and finance proper, then uh, you might want to, or go into the banking se sector, then uh, you might want to have MSc Islamic Banking in the title. Um, if you're thinking you're going to be more broad than that, so that it's, uh, it's wider in the, in the sector, Islamic Banking Finance International Business uh, may well be um, a good signal for you going forward. There are two entry dates onto both of these, uh, onto these three um, uh, pathways. I should say also that uh, when you graduate, your degree says MSc Islamic Banking and Finance, or it says MSc Islamic Banking, Finance and International Business. Um, so these pathways are the titles of the degree that you graduate with. The, um, there are two start dates, there's January and September. Now, this is important, especially at the time of COVID, in that uh, we've been saying to people who want to come in January, uh, sorry, want to come in September, then you should apply and go through the process. But if for some reason, any reason that you don't make it in September, then we will help you um, just transfer your offer uh, and any scholarships that you have uh, to January. The structure of this um, uh, degree is what we call a conversion degree structure. So in a conversion degree, you can come from any background, uh, any undergraduate background. Now on our conversion degrees in the School of Business, there are about 40% will have a business background, about 40% will have a non-business but technical background. So this is like engineering, statistics, mathematics, chemistry, physics, things like that and about 20% come from a non-business, non-technical background. So music, English literature, um, uh, history, politics, things like that. Now, that, non, uh, that, that uh, very broad background brings with it a style of teaching where we have to make sure that, that we understand that the people in the room uh, may not have a background, in this case, Islamic finance, uh, and so uh, that is taken into account. But it brings with this amazing amount of richness because the background of people um, is incredibly broad. Uh, and so uh, one of the areas where you learn at any university is from the other students. And the, the fact that everybody comes from a different background, some people will be coming at uh, issues from an engineering perspective, some will be coming from a historical perspective, some will be coming from a law perspective. That just brings a, a level of richness and understanding and learning, which uh, um, makes it incredibly um, uh, valuable to yourself as you go forward. I guess one of the things I could say is that the original conversion degree is an MBA. So on an MBA, you don't have to have a business background. Um, you might even get in 
my work experience, which is also um, taken into account here. So the original is the MBA. It is incredibly successful for these reasons, is that you can have any background and you're bringing different skills um, to the whole, um, to, the, to the learning experience. So the structure um, of the Islamic finance program is to have eight modules plus a project. Uh, and we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about the project report um, shortly. Um, there are four core modules. Islamic capital markets, Islamic moral economy and finance, Islamic commercial law, financial transactions, is international business finance. Uh, and then this is the project and the project is done over the summer. And then you choose, um, you need to choose a quantitative model. So if you're going to be uh, successful in, um, in business, you need to have a quantitative uh, background as well, plus three options uh, which define the, um, which define the, um, the, the pathway that you're, you're actually choosing to be on. Um, before we go on a little bit further, Ali, would you like to talk just briefly about the three Islamic finance uh, modules which are uh, part of the core? Just quickly, uh, Professor. Yeah, Bill, just quickly. So Islamic moral economy for any of uh, who might join us gives you the foundational issues why we are doing something different in relation from the other uh, school of thoughts in economics. So that is a foundation. Then fundamental issues in, uh, in banking because you're bringing the value, uh, values or value-based orientation. So the risk management is slightly be different in the certain sectors beyond what we call it financial risk in liquidity, operational and so on. There are other parts of the issue which we call it social risk are also taught. Uh, also, students need to know how banking sector work within the different regulatory frame, what are the models or uh, types of Islamic banking is not one. So in different places, different jurisdictions, we will have a different banking models and hence we can see the diversity. And summer is a great opportunity, which we are now doing actually uh, uh, based on your choice to choose something that you want to specialize or dig a little bit farther and learn how things are done and developed. So that is actually what gives you this program. In addition to the conventional models, and the main part is you need some kind of quantitative skills because that it needs to come out in a project report. You need to see that you are able to use. Now, I, I want to just add something which is, Professor Bill was ma mentioning people who are coming from non technical or non-business oriented studies. Uh, usually we have people who come from Islamic studies or Muslim Islamic seminaries, which are very uh, poor in mathematical, statistical reasoning. This is a very good opportunity to catch up to see how things are done differently. In addition to that theoretical legal narrative which you are exposed, uh, this mo uh, program gives you the foundation, not only foundation actually gives you starting from the beginning so that you can master or use these skills for your further education and research. Yeah, that's right, Ali. So the, if you don't have a, a strong uh, maths background, uh, you need to have some maths at, at high school, but this is a, an opportunity to reinvent yourself as somebody more technical than you, than you were in the past. Um, and in business and finance and, and uh, you know, in the higher management areas, um, there is a reliance on being comfortable. You don't have to be an as absolute whiz kid when it comes to um, uh, maths and, and statistics and like, but you need to be comfortable with it as it goes along. So uh, there are these four core modules in the project, uh, and then the quantitative model is module is also taught by the School of Business. So uh, international business finance, as it says, is, is just examining um, business finance, but it, within a a global context, um, and that's one of the conventional modules. The quantitative module will also be a conventional module at the School of Business. And then of the three options, uh, you can, there is an opportunity to take another um, a module in the School of Business as well as you go forward. The business project is um, done in, the, is run in the summer each year. So if you start in September, uh, you'll be doing the business project right at the end of your program. If you start in January, you'll be doing it in the middle of your program. We've taken into account 
um, uh, the differences in, in how far you are along in the program uh, and we make sure that it doesn't affect how, how the business project is run. The business project can be done in one of three different ways. Um, about 50% of the students. Now, uh, we've only had a small co cohort on the Islamic banking, uh, the Islamic finance program so far. Um, and um, in that case, uh, in that case, um, uh, we're not quite sure what the ratio will be but on the other conversion degrees about 50% of the students will do just a standard base uh, project report about 25% of the students do what we call a research consultancy exercise and that is one where um, local firms provide um, uh, problems uh, where groups of students get together as a group of consultants with a supervisor to provide the uh, consultancy uh, to answer the problem but interestingly, a quarter of the students do an internship, which is arranged by the, um, the School of Business. Uh, and these eight week internships are in China, Vietnam, uh, Mexico, and Manchester. In the case of um, Islamic finance, it's most likely gonna be Manchester or London uh, to, where, for the uh, internships. These are eight week internships paid for and arranged by the um, School of Business. So, um, it's uh, the, the project is an opportunity really um, to be able to um, focus more on the applied aspects if you do it as an internship as you're going forward. It's looking at the, the firm, the market uh, through the, the eyes or the prism of the program that you've done so far. Um, the Islamic banking um, finance and international business um, has a slightly different uh, structure. So this has still got the core, Islamic moral economy and finance, Islamic, the business project, risk management and Islamic banking and finance applied, Islamic banking and insurance. Uh, but we also bring in internationalization strategy, strategic decisions for business, uh, international business finance. Now these three are coming from um, the School of Business, and you get to choose two other options, which most likely will be Islamic finance uh, options or from the rest of the Islamic finance program. Um, whoops, there must be one slide we're missing, or have I missed a slide? Oh, the base program is just the, the same, so that's fine. Um, the programs, uh, one of the advantages of this program is that there is the opportunity for um, uh, uh, two scholarships, the University Dundee Global Excellence Scholarship uh, and its sister, the University of Dundee Global Citizenship Scholarship um, are available for the Islamic Finance Program. If you get either of those uh, scholarships, uh, which are worth 5,000 uh, pounds reduction in your fee, then you automatically get the Al Maktoum College Scholarship uh, and this is 5,000 pounds, but is paid as 10, 500 pound per month payments. So as to help you with your uh, living expenses while you're at um, Dundee. So um, I think that's a good place to stop just for, um, uh, for the program itself. Um, Ali, anything else that you would like to add about the program and then maybe I'll uh, talk a little bit about the university itself. Is that a good idea, Alan? Yes, but we have a question from a student who says, can a student change major between the Islamic finance options? Oh, yes. Uh, so, um, quite right. Excellent question. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, when you arrive, the, the system is set up, the process is set up to be completely flexible at the start. So uh, when you arrive, you'll most likely matriculate, which means register, uh, onto the MSc Islamic Finance Program. In the first two weeks, you get to find out about uh, the other pathways and programs. Uh, you get to understand um, the content. You have an opportunity to talk to the uh, deputy director and myself. You also get an opportunity to talk to the lecturers. Um, and you will get an opportunity to talk to the uh, past students, which are, all, are still on the program from the last intake. 
Uh, and only after that do you get to choose your modules, uh, your pathway and your degree. So um, the absolute yes is the answer. We've set it up to be that flexible, partly because we know that no amount of looking at a program at a distance will allow you to fully understand what is involved in each of the pathways. And so we want you to just be relaxed about this, arrive in Dundee, do the research when you're here. Uh, there will be a lecture by, from me, which also talks about um, how the strategy of how to choose the pathway and the program. So um, at the end of two weeks, you get to choose uh, and then you go forward. Uh, what we experience is that almost nobody changes their mind after, they, after the two weeks. Uh, a lot of people change their mind in the first two weeks. You, you about, you know, 15% of the students will change the pathway that they thought that they were coming on. Uh, sorry, more than that, 25% of the students will change the pathway that they thought they were coming on. Um, uh, but after the two weeks, almost nobody asks to change. And usually when they do ask to change, it's because of some reason other than the program itself. There's something else going on in their life. That's an excellent question. Thank you very much for that one. Um, anything else you'd like to say about the actual program itself, um, I mean, Ali? Just following what you were discussing, I mean, it will also depend for anyone in selection of the models or which pathway they want to choose. It's very much what is their personal interest. Each of these pathways has distinction, despite that they share some of the core modules, like Islam Moral Economy is across the whole three programs. But at the end of the day, there is a distinction. So somebody who is very much interested into research-based Islamic finance, so they would like to continue after the uh, MSc, then yes, MSc Islamic finance is a key because it's rigorously technical. It requires, you know, capturing uh, the theory of Islamic moral economy and how things are evolving, but also it requires a lot of research skills, econometric statistics, and so on. The other program, which is MSc Islamic Finance and Banking, it mainly wants to prepare you for the banking sector, for the industry itself. And that is where we are focusing because you need to take the risk management, you need to take the forecasting, the models which are very much related to the banking area. And the third one is actually international business. So it brings you into more, it's, I think I will say a little bit less technical for people who are coming from different backgrounds, they find very much appealing to them because a mathematical side is not strong as the other two programs, but also it gives you the other exposure because international business, Islamic finance is international business by itself because it's in more, many of the countries. Therefore, uh, having that exposure strategy and other modules which are related to the international business or business studies in general will give you another uh, insight. Now, also, there is this is very important. I know some of you coming from uh, uh, from certain countries where the title itself is important. You cannot work in certain countries if your title does not say that. So therefore, we kept that flexibility for your benefits because your potential employers in your home countries, they will look at that. So that's why you also need to take into consideration. Okay. Um, I guess also I should go back to this, uh, the idea, of the, the advantages of the breadth of the background of the students. I've just spent the last uh, three weeks uh, interviewing students for uh, the uh, Global Citizenship Scholarship. And I've just been overwhelmed by um, their technical abilities, their backgrounds, the range of backgrounds, um, how engaged they are with their own education, but also engaged with the population around and the community and society. Um, if you come, you will be immersing yourself in a group of students who are just incredibly uh, vibrant, dynamic, caring. Uh, this is a special group of students. And I think they're a special group of students because they have an interest in Islamic finance and because of the philosophical underpinnings of is Islamic finance uh, being one where there is a community aspect to it and, and how you uh, affect the world. And so this is impressive. Do we have any uh, other questions so far? There is a question and I think uh, I, I can answer it. Okay. What is the make University of Dundee good in Islamic finance? What is the make that program different with others? Now I will give you the overview of the UK based programs in Islamic finance. So we have other universities 
uh, like East London, West Westminster, Newman University, Reading, all these pr places provide the Islamic finance from different angle. Westminster will be from the law oriented proposition. Uh, others provide you Islamic finance in relations to give you one module uh, within the conventional framework where you will choose, let's say, Islamic banking, and then you end up with this uh, MSc Islamic banking finance, but you don't know philosophical foundation, you don't know emergence on the field, neither it appeals to the industry, actually, you are coming from the conventional Bangalore, basically, but just having one module of Islamic banking finance does not make you specialize. Now, our only competitor, I have to say, is at Durham University, we, uh, in terms of the structure, the design, uh, it is more or less we are competing with each other. Now, the difference between us and them, actually, the uh, main professor is our external examiner, which we can say. So there is a close relation. So we are not actually competing with each other. We are actually collaborating in, in terms of research, as well as the quality of Islamic banking finance. What we want to produce is not just that we will give you tools. This is how we do. We want to create that substance understanding, what is all about, how it goes beyond banks or any financial institution is a just tool to deliver something, but what is a motivation, wisdom behind uh, the Islamic finance, how it emerged. So what are the issues that we are trying to tackle? What are the innovations and what is the way forward that you can take to your home countries and start building and be part of this process of Islamic finance? So that is probably what we want to is a substantialist movement of Islamic finance. It is not how we can just tick the boxes of Sharia compliancy in relations to that it fits to the norms, classical norms, which we are trying to follow, but is actually what is the whole ideological movement or theory of understanding Islamic economics or ways coming. As you know, each school that emerged in economic thinking from the classical till now, they contributed something. So what is the niche or unique part of Islamic economics? This is what we want to preserve in Dandio. That's what gives us originality. Okay. Um, I think the other thing which distinguishes us uh, from the other um, degrees in uh, UK and elsewhere is, is the actual structure of the program. So if you go to the other universities, you will most likely meet a structure which has three or four uh, modules, even if, if it really is an Islamic finance program, it'll be three or three modules of, of Islamic finance. They'll have research methods, they'll have quantitative methods, and then they will have um, a, a large dissertation. Now, um, the problem in that structure is that if you come from a background which is not already Islamic finance, then you will be, uh, you won't learn enough in three modules to be able to do a large dissertation. And so you really are uh, sort of on the back foot to start off with. But in our structure, you have eight modules uh, and there'll be a six most likely, but maybe six or seven, which are in Islamic finance or the, or the uh, discipline. Uh, and then you are using that to focus on a short, sharp, project. And the, part of the reason why we went to a short, sharp project was that employers told us that they would prefer somebody to write a project, which is clear uh, and straight, straightforward, set out the question, work it through the, the theory and answer the problem, uh, rather than a very large dissertation, which is much more discursive. As Ali's already said, if you want to go on and do a PhD, then there is an opportunity to do research methods at the start of your um, PhD, which is what uh, most universities will ask, no matter what sort of um, MSc that you've come come with from the background. Um, are there any other questions there? There's also a question which I just realized that I didn't mention. How many Indonesian students do we have on the program? Currently, we have only one uh, lady. She is on our program, uh, MSc, and she's finishing uh, this summer. But I don't know how many will come now in September because we have a lot, lot of application from Indonesia, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, no, that's right. Um, there's there's a, a large number from Africa, um, Pakistan, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, um, um, Fiji. We had a Fijian um, applicant, which I was just overjoyed with. If you haven't guessed, I've got an Australian accent and Fiji is just from my own backyard so I'm very pleased that they've applied it would be great if they make their make their way here 
but the range of countries is really impressive. Um, we've had a we've got a Sudan um, applicant, uh, Tanzania. Um, it's just an amazing array uh, in the background. Um, so, uh, shall I talk, Ellen? You can nod here. Uh, shall I talk a little bit about the the university itself? Um, so you can do. I'm just conscious of the time because this was meant to be a mini webinar. There's also oh. a question that's come in about um, if there's any financial arrangements for home students, which I presume the answer is no. I just want to double check with you. Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, there's no formal arrangements uh, um, that we have in place um, for home students. That's true. Uh, accepting the, f the home student fee is considerably lower than the, the international fee. Perfect. as it goes forward well yeah if you want to do a quick five minute overview of uh well it won't even take five minutes how's that <laughs> uh just to make it well listen um i think the easiest way to, to explain the university is to focus on student satisfaction so the university always ranks incredibly highly in the uk um, for student satisfaction and usually number one in scotland uh, for student satisfaction and people ask me why why this is the case and I think there are three answers to that. The first one is that the university does focus on teaching, research-based and teaching. So Ali is somebody who is very heavily associated with um, research in Islamic finance, and he's one of the lecturers. At is doing the same. Uh, these people have an interest in Islamic finance at a research level. It makes them incredibly enthusiastic. They leap out of bed in the morning and they say, you little ripper, I'm off to do Islamic finance this could be the most wonderful day of my life. You have that sort of lecturers who are teaching you, uh, and we have a very strong focus on uh, teaching. Now, that strong focus on teaching has led to the university as a whole to be uh, given, uh, awarded the TEF Gold Award. There's only 10 universities in the UK which have that TEF Gold uh, Award, and it's for um, teaching standards. So we focus on teaching. I think the second thing is the actual structure of the campus. The town of Dundee is relatively small. It's about uh, 150,000 people. It's got two universities. It's got a very large teaching hospital, which is part of the uh, University of Dundee. And the town has a history of being a port. And so it's multicultural. It's, a, it's, a, it's very much at ease at international um, people being in the city. And there's a very close relationship between the city and these, um, these institutions. But on top of that, the campus is small and self-contained and right next to the city centre. And the accommodation, if you're living in, in a university accommodation, is either on the campus or just next to the campus. So people don't bother to buy cars. There's no need. They don't even bother to buy bicycles. They just walk to and from the campus and their accommodation. If they want to go to the railway station, it's four or five minutes away. If they want to go to the bus station, it's about four or five minutes away. So you have this very um, neat, smallish campus community, which is developed uh, over time, where everybody knows everybody else. If you don't live in a, a university accommodation, then you will most likely live in the West End, which is right next to it, or just on the other side around Al Maktoum College, actually, is the two areas which is uh, the popular areas for the students. So a very neat, self-contained um, campus. The third thing is that, um, the third thing is that it has an incredibly well-run student union. So I've been at the university for 23 years. Um, most universities have good years and bad years, good years and bad years for their student unions. But for some reason, the University of Dundee has worked out a way of passing the management of the student union from one year to the next to the next and maintaining an incredibly high level of management. Now, the importance of the student union is that they run all the clubs and societies. They also run the on-campus cafes and, and eating areas and bars. The, the um, student union is also involved in all of the student feedback at the module level, at the school level, uh, and at the university level. So they're very closely involved in um, being able to help students uh, tell us how to improve the program and, and how to make the, the whole process better as it's going forward. But also they're involved in uh, the, a lot of the very high level 
um, uh, decision-making committees within the university. And so there is this the very strong input from the students uh, into the whole decision-making process. And the university recognizes how incredibly important this is and so welcomes this whole process as they go forward. And because of that, um, this, the, the, the learning experience and this, uh, the experience of the students in general is improved um, because of the, the union involvement, the student union involvement as we go along. So I think those are the three really, the big reasons why uh, student satisfaction is incredibly um, high um, going forward. Is there anything you would add to that, Ellen, about the description of the university? That would be, is there Definitely. something I might have missed? I think I think you've covered it all. I think um, that, yeah, the thing to focus on is that our students not only get an excellent teaching quality, a fantastic program that they're able to study on, but they also have um, overall the best student experience in the UK. We have been named as the University of the Year for Student Experience, which we're extremely proud of. Um, so I think I think that's a really good thing to focus on. So if students are looking for a specific program in Islamic finance, want to come and have some incredible teaching, an incredible collaboration with Al McToom College and an incredible experience, the University of Dundee may be an excellent option for them. So I just want to thank yeah. you for joining us, Bill. This has been really, really helpful. That's very good. Um, if there are more questions, they can come back uh, to you or to what, what would be your advice? I've posted um, our email addresses, so mine, Steph and Joe's email addresses, into the chat for everybody, though hopefully um, as our agents you already have those email addresses. If you've got any further questions about the Islamic finance programs or uh, if your students have any questions about those programs and would like to ask them, please feed them back to me and I'll make sure that they're fed back to you, Bill, and to you as well, Ali. Thank you. Excellent. Brilliant. Okay, all right. Well, all much. I can say at the end is that you're all fabulous and wonderful, and I hope you come to Dundee. If you do get to Dundee, knock on my door. You'll meet me at the beginning of the program, but knock on my door and tell me about your experiences and how you how you got to Dundee. Uh, I will enjoy every moment of it. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Again, thank you for joining thank us you. on a Monday morning and on a Monday afternoon for all the other agents that have joined us. And uh, we look forward to having you at our next webinar in a couple of weeks' time. Okay. Fantastic. Bye-bye. Bye now. Bye.